Guys, welcome to Two Sticks. We've got a special episode of Two Sticks coming right at you. This is going to be a song. Uh, Belita, do you want to go ahead and yeah, um, talk about it real quick? The song means something to me. Um, it's it's from Uzbekistan, and uh, my dad, my late dad, who's dead now, he's Uzbek, right? So, <clears throat> this guy, Shirali, Shirali Jureyev, was probably the most popular singer in that country. Uh, and he does like almost like Frank Sinatra type stuff in his own language, mm -hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> my dad was known for his poetry, his Turkish language poetry, and Uzbek people are a Turkic people, Turko-Mongol people. My dad uh, received all kinds of awards for his poetry when he was alive, and he says that this song is actually his poem or based on his poem. So I'm assuming he, you know, gave this guy permission you know, communicated with him in some way, or it could be an homage uh, from this this singer to my late dad. So um, certainly, I don't. I'm not implying he pirated the song or anything like that, right? And again, I don't know all the details. So, is it my dad's poem? Is it is it inspired by my dad's poem? Right? Well, I mean, it's not uncommon for artists in different genres to have um, ghost writers, number one, or just to use. Uh, written material from right. regular everyday people. Right. Like country music artists do have been known to do that all yeah, the time. Yeah. I'm certainly not trying to from... knock this this performer. Yeah. So... Put it this way. He's been through now a little bit about this performer. He's been through some some shite. Okay. In yeah. his country, um, at one point after this song came out, he we made a song or sang a song about the rule of that country that was critical. And his life was, was practically ruined. I mean, he wasn't allowed to produce albums. He wasn't allowed to do concerts. He made his living doing weddings. So imagine being the most popular male singer in your country. And they're like, you must, you can only do weddings to make a living. But recently on YouTube, I've seen some concert footage of him. So I guess the ban was lifted. Um, and again, we get the news second and third hand from, from the Silk Road. So I don't know how true the first bit of news was. So it's all a bit of a mystery to me, but the song is called Uzbekim, which means I'm an Uzbek, and it's basically about Uzbek history. Mm -hmm. And the Uzbeks are a Silk Road people. They're, they're Turko-Mongol with a little Persian, and honestly, a little bit of Slavic because it was under control of Russia. So there's some, there's some intermingling there. I can't tell you all the words of the song. My Uzbek isn't that hot, but I can, I can tell you bits and pieces, so. <laughs> We're not gonna provide lyrics unless they have them on the video. No, they don't, they don't. So, um, just don't worry about the lyrics, guys. Just listen to the, uh, listen to the music. If you know the language, that's great, but if you just speak English, just listen to the music. So, um, we're gonna go ahead and It's short. Now. Uh, so if you can't stand that kind of stuff, it'll be relatively painless. I like it because it's my dad's. What do you think of his voice? Is that Shirali? Jureyev, yes. Sounds good. He's the uh, Uzbek Johnny Cash. <laughs> I'm glad I shared this with you. I'm getting a new, you know. I always wanted one of those hats. It's like an octagonal, like yeah. square octagonal type of hat. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Oh, you can tell in his younger days he was a pimp. So we've got sitars. No. What's that uh, violin? Or not violin, guitar type sound. Um, pause for a sec. There is a live performance of this song, which is well worth watching because okay. there's, there's, a, there's an instrument called a tambur, which is sort of lays flat on the table and is plucked. They have, oh, some, yeah, they have yeah, something yeah. called a saz. You've seen time. the saz, yeah, which yeah. is basically a type of lute. Yeah. They have a, a horn called the uh, zurna, which is, I guess, similar to an oboe or something like that. You know, yeah. woodwinds. Um, 
drums, different types of drums. It, the Silk Road, the cool thing about the Silk Road civilizations is you got the Chinese influence, you got the Russian influence, you got Persian, Middle Eastern, you got European influence, you know, you've, you've got all these different things that go back and forth on these trade routes in a Marco Polo journey down the Silk Road. So he talked about his journeys there. Um, the, 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 the song is basically about important people in Uzbek history. He's talking about, um, for example, uh, Avicina, who was a, a famous doctor. He wrote the Canon of Medicine. He's talking about Genghis Khan and his grandson or great-grandson Batu, yeah, you know, the yeah. Golden Horde. There's a couple of names of, fa there's a lot of famous scientists that, that, were, that were from this, uh, this region. And the founder of the Uzbek Empire, Ulu Bey, when he wasn't being an emperor and fighting wars, he was he was up in an observatory looking at the skies because he was really into astronomy. So. Oh. So wait, I have a question about the instruments. Do you mm -hmm. think, and I know you probably don't know this, but we can not, maybe <laughs> not, not a lot of people may know this, but all these different native instruments, like the Turkic instruments, mm -hmm. like, do you think that they were all invented all at the same time no. in the same community, or do you think they no. were invented in isolation, separated by decades <sighs> or generations across I mean, spans of like, because, when you, if you have these instruments that get invented in isolation and right. you bring them together, it's really cool that they they all seem to like har they harmonize really yeah. well and create this singular okay. sound. It's like we, we got to get into a little bit of controversy here, right? Uh -huh. There's a reason why I requested to you. I said we're going to put this up, but we're going to disable comments because it is impossible to make any video about the Silk Road cultures, the Turkic cultures, and Islamic culture. Uh, Indian culture, right? Mm -hmm. Without getting tons and tons and tons of hate mail from both the, the people in the culture and people that hate it, mm -hmm. all right? Because there's there's this huge intermingling in history, right? There's disputes about who invented what musical instrument, right? Oh, I see. And and it it gets so passionate that I've I've heard of, for example, I've heard of people getting in fist fights over who invented the doner kebab, you know, the gyro. Yeah. I've heard of people getting in fistfights at parties over that because one was Greek and one was Turkish or, or the Chinese saying, no, we invented this and then, and then the, the, the Turkish people are like, no, it was the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, you know. And I've heard of people getting inordinately violent and, and uncool about it, right? And I don't give haters a voice. That's why I'm asking you to disable all these comments. Here's the thing, okay? Some of these instruments show up on, or things like it show up on hieroglyphs on Egyptian walls. Some of it show up in pictures of ancient Sumeria, the Mohenjo-Daro, ancient Chinese cultures. Right. Right? And so you know that music is a human universal, and it could be that similar instruments were, were invented at different times in isolation. It could be that the ideas went back and forth. What we know about the Silk Road cultures is that they invented new things. They took things from all over the world and incorporated and then developed their version of it or their take on it. Yeah. Right? I don't worry too much about that. All I say is, it's the end result, and to me, it's it's a very beautiful sounding music. It's very melodic, and it has all these exotic sounds, and you know, I I love it even if I don't completely understand all the words. I understand a lot of the words. Yeah, that's the cool thing about being a Westerner is like you hear music like this, and this to us sounds really exotic, but. If you grow up in the area where this music comes from, to you, this is like the bass note, you know, the bass right. line. Like this is what music. When you think of music, this is what you think yeah. of. And and to, us, to me, it sounds like whoa. I grew up that? here, you know. I'm I'm a Westerner. I'm an Easterner. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm in between it all, and I've traveled different parts of the world. I can I can take these multiple viewpoints, which makes yeah. me wildly unpopular because I I give outside viewpoints to everything. They're like, we don't like you. But anyway. the sea, uh, the voice sounds good though. I think of him as a Central Asian Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Pipped out all, in all white with like a turtleneck or something. <laughs> Al Biruni, Al Harazmi, famous scientist. Al Farama. I know Biruni was an astronomer. A 
نسلی نسلی بلکی بزنو People in, in Asia and the Middle East are incredibly proud of their history. They're really connected to their past. Like you said, if people are willing to go to blows over who invented the, uh, you know, the whatever, the, the gyro, or whatever it happens to be, then I could deduce from that that these people really care about their history. You oh, know? dude, they really... Just for giggles, go to, go to any public library and go through some English language Asian history books that, that focus on Central Asia. You'll actually see where people have scratched something out and written something in, like the, the Central Asian invention of the stirrups and someone scratched it out and put Chinese and someone scratched out and put Central Asian later. Like, wow. <laughs> and that's here at Columbia, I've seen. <laughs> When you talk about that far along, uh, long ago in history, though, I feel like so many of our quote-unquote inventions, it's so hard to trace where they went, you know, where who invented what, right. you know? It's not like someone issued a patent for the first violin. They didn't violin. have a patent office back in ancient Sumer, yeah. you know? Yeah. You could, uh, like, this is a Sumerian flute. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know? There was no, like... Uh, you know, you didn't have to the wheel whenever that was invented. Like nobody went to the lo the local patent hut or whatever it was and filled out paperwork. Yeah, and I mean, got it, a number and all it's that. It's not like every time you use a printing press, you, you give the Chinese a royalty, or, <laughs> yeah. or if every time you, someone uh, makes coffee, that they're like, well, the Turks brought that into Europe. Let's, or if you know, every time someone does an organized sport, you have to like, I don't know what, go back to England for, for soccer, you know? Or yeah, or pay the English something. Scotland for golf or. I don't know, it's retarded, but anyway. Let, let's roll through and finish this, yeah? Yeah. Chinggis, and his He's not a villain over there. He's like the great-grandfather of it all over there. So I can't identify all the instruments. There's sounds that I'm not quite sure where they're coming from. To me, it sounds a lot just like classical music. It is. Like, it's it's a form of classical. It's music. like you're. It's like a, maybe Middle Eastern classical music. Like European classical music might have be a newer invention. Like those instruments, a lot of these instruments might be a lot older, but to me, it still sounds the same. It's got a lot of the same components. Right. You know, it's got like the. Uh, thing that sounds like a violin, it's got something that sounds like a guitar, it's got the woodwinds and all of this kind of creating this uh, this uh, sonic uh, portrait. You know? Right. And so, uh, funny thing about Western cool. music, Western classical music, okay, something that, that is proven, it's written down in Western history books, mm -hmm. English language history books that I've read, um, Moorish Spain, the Islamic culture of Moorish Spain had a huge influence on European architecture, on European music, yeah. uh, cert, uh, cuisine, all that stuff, and vice versa. You know, we, well, cause the, uh, we the, have we have this history. The the is Islamic people they took over Spain, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Spain was their was their territory. I think for a span of four to six hundred years or something. Yeah, like so that. a long ass time. So. Yeah, they it's they kind of they probably came over and instilled all their customs and stuff. So a anyway, before we <clears throat> move on to you know more conventional things, I just want to say, um, yeah, this was this is for you, Dad. I guess Uchkin, he's he's long gone, but part of part of his work, if the if I, the narrative if I got the narrative right, remains in this song, and uh, it's a little bit of legacy left for future generations. Basically. A song praising the Uzbek ancestors, praising part of my history and my family's history. Excellent. <laughs> well, uh, Belita, thank you for sharing that with us. Guys, if you 
Doug, the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't worry about commenting because comments will be disabled for this video. For Two Sticks, my name is Scott. I'm Belita. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.